Okay, and welcome back, everyone. This is the First Inning Radio Show, and we're live on Spotify. You can find us there on a, and our latest episodes. Just go search the First Inning Radio Show, BX Barma 2011, on Spotify, and you'll find the latest episodes. As well, you can just Google the First Inning Radio Show, and you'll be able to listen to it on any platform that you're able to listen to it on. And uh, I'm the Big Vomit 2011, and I'm along with Roger, the Big Yankee fan. Say hello, Roger. Hello. Uh, good, good evening, uh, BX Vomit. We are recording on uh, March 9, 2020, and spring training is well underway now. Yeah, man, spring, spring training is here, and it's almost gone. Yeah, yes, and we do have some uh, very uh, tough news on the hour Judge front as far as his uh, injury is concerned. At first, it was a case of where he was experiencing discomfort in his shoulder and then in his right pectoral. And after quite a number of more tests and MRIs and T and scans, they have discovered that he has a, a stress fracture of the upper right rib. And yeah. it is a stress that fracture at this point in time. And what they are going to do is give it about two weeks worth of rest. They believe that it's been a period of time where it is resting, where it is healing, and they are going to give it uh, two weeks worth of uh, rest. But they are not ruling out the possibility of him um, possibly having the burden removed and having to have surgery. So it is a very serious situation. Well, I heard Aaron Boone in a... um, Actually, it's Aaron Boone's birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Aaron Boone, if you hear me. If you haven't oh, heard yeah. <laughs> but um, the guy said that um, the rib is healing. So at this point, um, surgery wouldn't be an option. You wouldn't want to do surgery on it if the bone is healing. You know? I see. But uh, they said that this dates back to September when he dove in Yankee Stadium. I think... Uh, yeah, September 18th, you were at that game. Yeah, I did see that too, and uh, and I knew he was hurt, man. You know, the way he got up, you know, he didn't look right, but it looked like he right. shook it that off. Was the game against the Angels, you and I saw uh, Severino pitch against the Angels. It was an eight to nothing uh, Yankees victory, and we met up with uh, James from Section Four Twenty talking Yanks. And then the next night, I wasn't there, and then I was there for the following four games. But on that game on September 18th against the Angels, he did the dive, and they feel it might have, uh, uh, the injury may have gone back to that point in time. Yeah, man, and here's the thing. You know, the Yankees had a training staff, which a team of doctors that were healing these players, right? They fired... They fired the whole team staff, right, of doctors. They rehired a whole new staff, and they're still getting hurt. I know. It's kind of a case of where these injuries are carrying over from 2019. And speaking of injuries now, we could add Gary Sanchez to the list, where they feel he won't be out for a long period of time. But he's been out for several games now because he's experiencing a sore back. He had a uh, tough game the other day and had a number of pass balls and let some wild pitches go by that really should have been caught. And he is dealing with a very sore lower back now, so he's been out for several days too. Oh, man. So, yeah, there it goes, man. There it goes. <laughs> you know? I don't know what to say, man. Uh, now we're going to have what? Uh, Ayaneta or Hishigawa? As yeah, catchers and now? Yoka, and uh, there's Josh Foley there, and uh, there's Ionetta. But uh, Sanchez, is, they believe Holy they're going to be alone for Sanchez, but knowing how the Yankees look, what does that mean? You oh, know? Man. Well, I, you let know, me but, tell you. Uh, he's dealing with a sore lower back, and Gary Sanchez, really, out of something like 480 games over the past three years, he's played in a grand total of 317 of them. He's pretty much. He pretty much missed uh, an entire season due to injuries. Out of the three years, he's been wow. out a year. So he is, uh, you know, he, him and John Carlos Stanton and uh, Aaron Judge and Aaron Hicks, 
I mean, you can count them. Uh, I mean, if uh, Sanchez is not ready, you, you'll have John Carlos Stanton out, Aaron Judge out, Aaron Hicks out, and Gary Sanchez. But let's hope uh, Gary Sanchez is just dealing with a little bit of a sore back and will be back soon. But he hasn't been back yet since, since uh, he's had that problem. Man, um, I, 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 let me tell you something funny. Uh, on Twitter, I, I forgot the Twitter's handle. But um, they said it's kind of it made a point though too though right, you know um these guys are injured right and you pump that drug in them what's that thing H T uh, uh A C or something like that what's that thing that steroid uh, oh yes I I H- don't H T C or something name of it. or something like that that makes them recover faster I forget right. the name of it. Well, it's a steroid, basically, right? Well, you pump these guys full of steroids, have them come back, play, let them get busted, right? Do you know the suspension will be a lot less than their than their actual being injured and returning would <laughs> would be less than them being injured? <laughs> That's how it seems for the Yankees. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you only get suspended, like, what, 30, 50 games? You know, and right. these guys are out. Three months, four months. What is that like? Eighty games. Oh yeah, you know it really is the case of, but then they could do irreparable uh, damage for their lives. You know if they play injured. Yeah, but I mean it's just it a joke. But, yeah, but it okay. really is. But could you imagine though? <laughs> you know. Right, I know, and uh, so that is the situation. Gary Sanchez is dealing with a sore uh, lower back. And uh, has missed several games. They expect him to uh, not be out long, but you know they've they've said that many times before. And uh, Aaron Judge uh, is going to be resting for the next two weeks. Neither Aaron Judge nor John Carlos Stanton will be ready for the start of the season, and will, in all probability, miss at least the first month of the season. Yeah, and you know what's worse as well but maybe as good for us that the verlander is hurt too oh wow i'm sorry to hear that i really don't like hearing about anyone injured you know even if they are you know rivals or anything uh, i i don't like to see uh injuries taking place uh, and um it is uh sad but uh that is how the situation as of right now they will be expecting uh, they will be expecting James Paxton back in May or June, is what they say. And usually when they say May or June, then you hope he's back by July, you know. Right. And, and uh, so that is the situation there. Aaron Hicks probably won't be back until August. John Carlos Stanton, who knows, he could come back, play half a game and be injured again. You never know. And we'll just have to see how it all goes. I mean, the way the the way the season was set up, the American League East was soft right now. They didn't have they don't have anybody in the American East. The teams are soft. The whole American League is soft right now. You know, and we were supposed to dominate this year. Literally dominate this year. And now we can't do that. Now we're just an average team. And now we're average, and the playing field is even now with the other teams. Right. You know, now we right. came back down to their level, you know, which sucks. You know, because... Yeah, that's the case of, you know, the Yankees have this starting lineup, I mean, that they have set there. With John Carlos Stanton and Aaron Judge in it and Aaron Hicks. But, I mean, really, how many games during the season are you going to expect to see they're full starting lineup all together, 100%. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, and good thing that all the great players, all the good players, they went to the National League this year. All the right. good players are in the National League, except for we still got Mike Trout here, you know, and that's about it, right? Out of all the – and, and, and Miguel Cabrera, Miggy. Right, right. And uh, I think we might have somebody from the Twins, but – that's about it out of superstars, you know, oh, in, in yeah. the American League. So, and everybody's on the Yankees, but now they're all hurt, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but uh, the Yankees do have such good depth. I mean, 
Yeah. Uh, really, when you think about Clint Frazier, he's not a very good fielder. He has to work on it, but he has got a terrific bat, Clint Frazier. And Miguel Andujar, I've said many times, I believe that he is going to be a star. And Miguel Andujar, Clint Frazier, uh, Brett Gardner, Mike Tartman had a outstanding season last year. Yeah. And I don't know if people are expecting him to regress yeah. uh, back a little bit this year or not. But uh, that will be the starting lineup at the uh, and when they open in Baltimore. It will be uh, Mike Talkman, uh, Brett Gardner, and probably Clint Frazier. And this will give Clint Frazier an extended opportunity to show what he can do. Right. I, I mean, the thing is, is that I'm not saying that the Yankees can't do it. The Yankees have the team to make it and will probably make it by the skin of our teeth. But the thing is, is right. that, you know, we was we was looking to dominate. You know, and it's frustrating, man. You know that these uh, no, guys get I hurt like that. I remember I said right at the uh, at the very beginning that you can almost count on injuries, especially with the Yankees. Yeah, because so we could talk about having John Carlos Stanton and Aaron Judge and Brett Gardner and uh, um, you know Gleyber Torres and Gio Rochella. But you have to you have to include injuries in there, and that really is the case, you know, especially with the Yankees, how how they get so injured, yeah. and you know, so we'll just see how many games this year they actually all play together. Their their actual starting lineup is together. And, and what's good thing about the Yankees is that they do have a good pitching uh, staff. Right. Uh, the starting five and the bullpen is the best right now, I believe, out of uh, the American League-wise. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, I think, you know, with Cole, yes, but the other four guys, could any any one of them could be a number two starter or a three starter. Yeah, so you know? we have Jordan Montgomery coming back after being out for two years. And right. uh, he has looked very good this spring training. So the staff as of right now, the way it looks is, going to be Garrett Cole in the number one starting position, followed up by Tanaka, followed up by Jay Hack, followed up by Montgomery, see, but, and then we'll see who takes that this spot for the time being. See, but here's the thing, though. If they're going to do what they did last year and start that, uh, uh, that fifth starter as a bullpen game, you know, you're going to blow out the bullpen and they're gonna they're gonna be horrible by the ending of the year, and we're not gonna win. Right. You know. Right. If you understand what you're talking about, that's, that's for sure. Bottom line, you have to save those guys in the bullpen. You know, you have to right. use them, like Joe Torre would have used them strategically, strategically, in the game. Right. Because so you think they should go with an opener again, uh, where where Chad Green does his opening. Nah, they should just go with straight five pitches, five starters, yeah, and let him saying. go three, four innings and let them guys come in in the five or six because you can't let these guys play a whole game like that. I mean, right. I mean, I mean, how many games you're gonna put out of Vino in? They put him in every single game. I know, and he declined quite a bit at the end of the year. You know, and then and you hardly ever see Zach Britton go out there. I I, I hardly ever saw him pitch. Right, you know, and then Chapman pitched today, and uh, well, since we have been, uh, we have not done a uh, radio show in a week. I will, uh, I will cap, uh, recap uh, the the uh, past week, and what happened on Tuesday is uh, the Yankees had a seven to uh, nine to one win over the Red Sox on Tuesday, March third. On Wednesday, March fourth, the Yankees had a nice three to two win. Over the Phillies on Thursday, the Yankees had a 15 to 11 high scoring loss to the uh, Tigers, where Cole actually got hit. And on Friday, the Yankees had a 5 to 1 loss to the Orioles. And uh, on Saturday, the Yankees had a nice 7 to 4 victory over the Pirates. And then uh, what I will do when you're ready is I will do. Uh, the takeaways for the Sunday and Monday games when you're ready. Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, okay, let me let me get to uh, Saturday. And uh, what happened uh, is on um, Saturday, the Yankees had the uh, 7-4 to 
win over the over the Pirates, and then on Sunday, the Yankees had a five to five tie, five to five tie with the Orioles, and I will do the uh, takeaways from that, and uh, that turned out to be a tie. And uh, okay, here we go. Okay, number one is uh, the Yankees' 2017 first round uh, pick, Clark Schmidt. At the start, allowing one earned run on four hits and striking out two batters over two innings of work. <clears throat> the Orioles scored three runs in the first inning as Chris Davis drove in Austin Hayes on a line drive single to center field. Hayes struck out swinging to start the game but reached first base after a pass ball by Yankees catcher Kyle Higashioka. Number two is how uh, the Yankees scored three runs. The top of the second ending inning as Esteban Florio doubled on a long drive to right field, scoring Higashioka and making the score three to one. Trey Ann Berge then drove in Rosal Herrera from third on the sacrifice fly to right field, and Thomas Malone doubled to left field as Florio would score to make it three to three. Number three is Malone hit his first home run of spring training in the fourth inning on a two-run blast to right field, giving the Yankees a 5-3 to three lead. Finished the game 3-for-3 three three with three runs batted in and the run scored. Number four, Agacio could got the start at catcher as Gary Sanchez was out with back soreness and went 1-for-3 at the plate with the run scored and the strikeout. And number five is D.J. LeMayhew, Luke Boyd, and Glaber Torres when they when a combined one for eleven from the plate with two strikeouts, as the boy was only was the only one to get a hit. So that game turned out to be a uh, five to five tie. Wow, so now all they really have to worry about really is the catching position now. Right. You know because, because of the uh, you know, injury history of uh because of the injury history of Gary Sanchez. Right, so obviously they're probably going to put Chris Sionetta there as the right. starting catcher because he has, yep. he already has experience, MLB experience, you know, so right. he's going to know exactly. what to do already. So he's going to treat it like his own, you know, where um, Hashigawa can um, learn from him as well. Right, right, exactly. And we will have, and remember there's also, there's totally there, there is Ayanetta there, and Eric Kratz is back as well. Well, if 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 um, Hashiawa does good this year, he might take that job and be the starting catcher next year. He's still young. Oh, he might right, be the future. There is that possibility. He might be the and future as catcher. And the Yankees were tying five to five, the Yankees played a split squad. And uh, the Yankees wore their, their regular season uh, pinstripe jerseys in the second game of the split squad, which was played back at George M. Steinbrenner Field. And uh, the Yankees won one to nothing over the Braves. And if you would like, I'll go through the takeaways of that. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, number one is Tanaka through three and two thirds scoreless innings, striking out four Braves batters and allowing just one hit. The righty continued to look good after throwing three perfect innings in his last start against the Boston Red Sox on March 3rd. Number two is Chris Hyanetta drove in the only run of the game on the single to center field in the bottom of the sixth inning. He finished the game one for two from the plate with a walk and a strikeout. Number three is Brett Gardner went one for three with two strikeouts while Clint Frazier went two for three from the plate. Number four is Steel Rochella walked once and went one for two, though he was left on base both times. The Yankees were one for four with runners in scoring position. And number five is Mike Ford and Mike Talk Talkman both struggled against the Braves, going to combined to 0 for six. And uh, that is the takeaways of the Yankees' uh, one to nothing win over the Braves as they played a split squad on uh, Sunday. Wow, man. So, I mean, and, you know, uh, it's so only that, it, that worked out there. It's only spring and, training uh, games. Also, uh, what happened is uh, today, 
uh, the Yankees had a three to one loss to uh, the Phillies, and uh, they played today and uh, lost three to one. And I will do the uh, takeaways from that. They have started today, and uh, right. the takeaways are. Number one, Jay Happ got the start for the Yankees on the mound and put together a decent outing. Happ went four innings and allowed three hits, including a solo home run from Mike, uh, Mikey Machuk that uh, tied the, the game up in the third inning. But that would be the only one Happ would allow on the day, and he added five strikeouts to his final tally. Number two is Gior Shella had a tough uh, go of it at the plate Monday despite some nice plays on the field at third base. Rochella ended his day over three with a strikeout included. Number three is Brett Gardner and Clint Frazier each grabbed a hit in the game, with Gardner finishing one for two and Frazier one for three. Frazier was hitting a solid 350 in the spring and added a run in the set, second inning off, an, off an Eric Kratz RBI single. Number four is Aurelis Chapman made his second appearance of spring throwing this one full inning and weaving with a walk and a strikeout under his belt. And number five is the Phillies took their first lead of the game on a two-run homer from Christian uh, Bethancourt off of Michael King, and they would hold on to it till, till the final out of the game, taking this one three to one. So we are all caught up on uh, the Yankees for their final week, for their for the previous week, excuse me. Okay. Wow. So yeah, man. So how many more days to uh, the start of the season? Is about what two weeks left? A week? Uh yes. Uh, March twenty sixth. Uh, today is the ninth. So seventeen days. Wow. So yeah, it's getting closer and closer. So now, um. <clears throat> They're going to have to train those, uh, especially the catchers, to become the starters and, and work that routine and sign stealing and all that stuff for the season. Right. And I do uh, want to make uh, an announcement to the fans. As far as uh, going to the baseball games, for those that are going to the baseball games, make sure that the fans bring hand sanitizer with them because uh, we are facing a very serious uh, possible pandemic with the coronavirus. It is officially known as COVID-19. It is a respiratory illness that uh, is spreading uh, the globe, and, uh, and people have to frequently wash their hands and don't shake hands with people and be as careful as possible. Yeah, uh, uh, we're going through that now here, and you want to hear something funny? The mayor... The Blasio, right? He's going to tell yeah. the he's going to tell the city of New York to avoid crowded trains, subway trains. <laughs> like, how, the right. hell, how the hell are you supposed to avoid a, a, a crowded subway train? <laughs> it really is the case where you know uh, a lot of like the markets, the the uh, Wall Street markets are really tanking and uh, a major uh, hysteria is taking place right now with the economy and with supply lines and uh, there's even a possibility of it affecting the summer Olympics and I I am wondering if this pandemic gets bad enough if it will affect the baseball season well it, it probably will it probably will it probably will because people don't want to be in crowded areas and stuff like that but guess what you if you paid a hundred something dollars for your ticket you'll probably be showing up to yankee stadium anyway <laughs> right i'm wondering though if things are going to be canceled i've heard some major events some concerts in texas have been canceled where where the season could be canceled or they would be playing in front of empty stadiums it really is something we'll have to see how this pandemic takes place I heard and what um, they will be doing as far as uh, crowd control. Right. I heard um, baseball players don't want to sign autographs no more. Right. I mean, at this point in time, you know, it is a bit highly contagious uh, uh, respiratory illness, COVID-19. And it can be, you, somebody can touch a surface, and uh, you could touch that surface and uh, touch your nose or touch your mouth. 
and boom, and the incubation period, you can go up to two weeks without having any symptoms before getting symptoms. And it is fairly de uh, deadly. The, uh, the fatality rate for COVID-19 is from 2% to 3.5%. And obviously, the elderly have a higher fatality rate than the younger. But uh, if you have a 2% to 3.5% fatality rate, is rather high. So it is a very serious situation. So when people are in public places, uh, make sure that you have hand sanitizer with you at all times. And keep your hands away from your face as well. And don't shake hands with other people. Yeah, man. I wish I had some Purell and uh, those masks, man. I'll be making a killing right now at 125th Street. What? A dollar? Yeah, my goodness, guys. Hey. I can see the guys out there that sell the water bottle selling masks. Yeah, $5 a mask and a dollar a squirt of of of, of, a, of a Purell on your hand. Yeah, that's pure capitalism for you. I'll tell you. <laughs> Holy cow. And that is something for sure. I'm telling but, you. Uh, that is, uh, and we have to wonder about supply lines, you know, because uh, China is really involved in all types of manufacturing. And, you know, it has hit China very hard and could interrupt supply lines as far as people's medications or different parts for equipment or yeah. drugs or all kinds of things. So it is a very serious situation. Let's hope it does not affect the season or games are canceled or anything like that. But uh, this is something that I had to bring up because you know the pandemic is now very much in the news and people have to be very careful. And I hope they can continue to get hand sanitizer. Yeah. You know, hopefully the shelves won't be empty from it. Well, they are empty already. It's all sold out everywhere. Wow. Uh, wow. In, in New York City, anyway, everything's sold out everywhere. Mass, Purell... Rubbing alcohol, the whole nine yards. Bleach, gone. Wow, incredible, incredible. Gone. Clorox and those people, they're making millions of dollars right now. Because they can't, they, they right, probably, I will tell they, you. They, they probably yeah, can't you, even keep up with demand right now. Oh, yes, I know. There has been uh, several, several, uh, several cases now that have, uh, uh, come up in New York City now where there are several cases where they are quarantined and they are quarantining themselves. Yeah, as of today, but, uh, it's 19 you just cases. Have to be very careful. 19 cases. But anyway, we'll leave it there and we'll uh, talk about it on the next show. See if, if, we, if we're survived, if we have survived the coronavirus, you'll hear another episode of the first uh, okay. Tenny Radio Show on Spotify. So we'll see everybody on the next one. So long, everybody, and thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Take care.